Good afternoon to you all. My name is Yusuf Faraj. I'm a senior lecturer at BIBF. Inshallah, today I will take you to a short uh, journey uh, of project of uh, business continuity management uh, preparing for pandemic. The duration of this session, inshallah, will be between one and a half to two hours. And we will focus on the business continuity aspects related to uh, the environment, the current environment. Which area we need to focus? Which components we need to add in our planning so that we will continue with our activities? And what are the areas that we need to consider so that we can prepare the right plan for the pandemic? What you will cover within this session, we will focus on four contents. First, we will identify the relationship between business continuity and pandemic planning. A lot of people, they think business continuity is equal to pandemic planning. Yes, to some extent. But business continuity will focus on areas that we will ensure if the activities are not functioning, we will do something else. Like, if there is no uh, core, uh, core application, then we can just switch to another core application, a backup core application. This is part of the business continuity. It will be very easy for us to do it. It will impact only within one specific department, one organization maybe. But pandemic planning, it will link with other factors. We need to include different factors so that we will ensure our business we will continue. This business continuation is not only related to one specific area, it's related to number of factors that we need to consider. Then, for the organization, we need to build the capability. The capability of pandemic is not similar to business continuity. As I said, business continuity, if the application or the core application is not functioning, we can switch very easy. We can switch to another server or another system. But the pandemic capability required to look at the, uh, the environment holistically so that we will include uh, the right functionalities to able to ensure that the business will continue. One of the most important elements for pandemic planning is the checklist. We are not alone. If the system is not functioning, we can implement our procedures, our systems. But because pandemic affecting the entire environment, therefore we should ensure that we are adhering with the uh, legal entities, uh, procedures outside our organization. Therefore, we need to prepare this, this checklist Okay, so that we can complete uh, the planning for the pandemic. Uh, for the pandemic, always there will be a life cycle. And this life cycle uh, will show you exactly how you can move from one stage to another stage. These phases that you will identify within the life cycle, it will identify the right components for you uh, as a uh, business continuity okay, plan but we will focus on very specific area, which is pandemic. The federal financial institutions, they uh, define the pandemic planning, okay, as a way that you need to focus so that the factors that it will impact your business, it will not consider as a one factor. Number of factors will come together you need to align it so that the business will continue. Traditional business continuity, uh, continuity is only focusing on one area. As I said, network, maybe uh, heavy rain, power outage. Okay, all of these will come under the business continuity planning that it will touch one area, only one area. But Pandemic planning or business continuity for pandemic planning, then we should consider about the holistic environmental factors. 
sometimes we cannot take a decision. It is outside our decision. For a traditional business continuity, you can take a decision because you need to follow your procedures, your processes. But for pandemic, yes, to some extent you will implement, but in the same time, you need to consider about number of factors that you need, okay, to include it in the plan. And these factors will not be under your control. Always it will be external. Maybe you want to adhere with the government uh, regulations. Sometimes you need to uh, follow specific professional bodies uh, for, uh, or a specific industry that you are operating. Then we need to identify the scale properly and the duration that uh, this duration it will react towards the uh, pandemic. Okay. Those who are working at the front line and the credit side. The salary transfer is not really 100% secure. If somebody died for a loan, personal or not, well, I cannot hear you properly. I don't know who is with me, but I cannot hear you properly. Can you repeat the question, please? Can you repeat the question? Okay. Now, for the pandemic, we need this scale and the duration to be included in the project. Why? Because, as I said, the impact will not be from one direction. It will not impact one department. Uh, it will not impact, okay, specific business processes in your organization. Therefore, you need to identify this scale in proper way. This scale will allow you, okay, to operate minimum operations or to run minimum operations at your organization. But you cannot operate any operations that you think it will work. Always you need to consider about the criticality. Because if I'm just running a business with three products, maybe during a pandemic, uh, situation, I cannot just serve these three products. I need to consider about the criticality. And this is my responsibility to identify the criticality. And I need to link the criticality of this product with the environment, whether I can do it or not. Maybe yes, this product A is very critical for me, but to ensure that to run, we need to depend on other factors, suppliers, but because of this pandemic, suppliers cannot, okay, supply the materials or they cannot just support us. Therefore, I need to switch to another product, the second product. But to ensure that this uh, product or this service will be completely functioning during a pandemic, then you need to consider about uh, the entire factors. You need to ensure that, okay, you're operating within a specific geographical area. You need to ensure that uh, the system within the country or health system within the country is functioning properly. You need to adhere with the legal, uh, legal entities to ensure that you are embedding all the uh, components, okay, for the business continuity planning only to touch the uh, pandemic, okay, uh, factor. This is what you need to consider while you are just focusing on the uh, pandemic planning. Now, for pandemic planning, always you need to consider as the uh, top organizational level. Why? Because you need to include uh, the right components of the uh, planning. What are the right components? Right components, and you need a support from top management, you need to identify the right tools and techniques. You need uh, proper inputs. You need to identify the right outputs. All of these, you need to include it uh, so that uh, the uh, pandemic planning, it will match with your strategy. And without the support from top management, it will be very difficult for you to do it. Because for example, senior management, uh, they will decide to stop the operation. Therefore, pandemic planning will not work. 
Therefore, there is a relationship between how you want to shape your pandemic planning with the support from the management that you will get because they will work together. Number two, you need to focus on the operational okay, activities at your organization. For example, okay, maybe marketing department, now in the normal situation, I need seven human resources to operate. But during uh, the pandemic, I need to reduce maybe from seven to three. But how I will ensure that if I reduce the number from seven people to three, still I can produce the same result. This is another component that you need to consider, the capacity and the capability. You need to bring them together so that you will ensure the three can produce exactly the same outputs. Then business continuity uh, uh, related to the pandemic planning always will focus on the unusual environment because the, ch the operation will change. As you know now, maybe 70 or 60 or 90% of your staff, they are operating from, okay, uh, from outside the organization. They are working from home. But how, how we will know that they are operating exactly like organization. Therefore, maybe we need to provide some tools, okay, some uh, components to able to produce. Otherwise, without these components, without these tools, it will be very difficult for them to uh, complete their business transactions. It is my responsibility because 70 or 80 percent away, maybe they cannot access to specific data or maybe they cannot access to specific uh, resources. Maybe it will impact over the operation. And of course, when you are focusing on business continuity strategies, okay, always you need to consider uh, the uh, components like areas that I need to focus on it. What are the components of the critical uh, products or services that I need to implement so that the production or the services will continue? Then, pandemic planning is not business continuity. Business continuity is a complete holistic picture, yes. But business continuity, you will focus on areas that you need to operate if that specific function is not working. Like, as I said, network, power outage, uh, core application. But pandemic impacting the entire organization, not one department, the entire departments. Not only the, the organizations, others, okay, like my customers also impacted. They cannot come to me. I cannot serve them. Therefore, I need to, okay, link all of these in proper way. Therefore, our business, okay, really is not functioning properly, unusual, okay? This is, we need to consider. Also, we need to understand uh, the risk landscape. To able to build the right capability for pandemic planning, then it's very important for you uh, to identify, okay, the activities that you need to embed within the pandemic planning to develop over time. Because time it will impact. Maybe sometimes you will develop the entire components of uh, pandemic planning, but legal entity will take a decision, the entire plan will not work. For example, they will say, okay, uh, the, you can work from a specific time, for example, 8 to 12 o'clock only, and you did the planning for eight hours, but actually now you want to work for four hours. Okay, it will impact over your processes. Now, to focus on the landscape, always you should know what is the nature of your business. Oh, this is very important. I am the right person, okay, to understand my business because I know what are the products and what are the activities and how these products and activities can serve the organizational strategy. Number one, you need to know the nature of your business outputs. Based on this one, you can link it to the pandemic okay, planning. Because if I'm just depending on the suppliers outside Bahrain 
And uh, these suppliers, normally they supply machines, materials, just because now there is no flight, I cannot get these, supply, uh, these materials, uh, therefore I cannot uh, complete or produce my products. It will impact over me. And again, the same for services. Maybe now customers, they don't want to spend money because they want to save money. Therefore, maybe I cannot serve them. They will not use my services. Or these services require a lot of components, technology. Maybe the technology is not functioning properly. Number two, I need to focus on the geographical locations. For one specific location, maybe the impact is severe. Therefore, I can stop number of operations. But for others, maybe uh, the, 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 the impact is not severe. Therefore, maybe I can, okay, expand my operations. But when I just focus on the geographical locations, I need to focus on my customers and suppliers, not only my operations. Because if that location is really severe and people, they are not coming out and they don't want to just uh, complete their business transactions, maybe it will impact over the business. Absolutely, yes. Maybe I cannot just embed the, the operations to serve the customers. And number three, we need to focus on the national and, and business culture and how this will impact, uh, okay, over the, the, the people in terms of behavior. Okay, for example, I, I should know, okay, uh, because of this specific uh, pandemic, I need to stay at home for a specific time. Okay, maybe, okay, there is a force from government or maybe no, we will decide to do it. Okay, and I need to work from, uh, from home. Therefore, maybe I will use very less resources, okay, internally to able to uh, use uh, the services or products. National and business culture is very important because it will allow if the people, they don't care, maybe, okay, they want to buy, they want to purchase, they want to use the services and products, maybe it will, okay, create an impact over me, a positive impact. But in the same time, maybe it will create, okay, a damage within the environment. We need to consider also about the risk landscape. Now, as a pandemic uh, planning, when I will identify what are the nature of my business activities, okay, I know my services and uh, products very well, and this is number one. Of course, you should know it very well. What are the outputs of your business? This is number one. Number two, you need to identify where you are operating, who are your customers, who are your suppliers, what are the relationship between customers, what are the relationship between sub suppliers and the culture that you are operating, the environment, okay, that you are operating. If you captured all of these, then the, the, the risk landscape will be flexible for you to manipulate with. Then the pandemic planning that you will develop, it will be, okay, easy to follow, easy to understand. Number four, you need to focus on the workforce. Now, for example, XYZ organization, they decided that 30% of my workforce, they should operate from the head office. Only 30%, 70% they should operate uh, from, okay, uh, their houses. Now, if they want to operate 30%, do you think we can complete all the business processes or not? Do you think there is a relationship between 30% and 70% that they are working outside the organization? Maybe they need to access to some specific resources. Therefore, it is your responsibility and you should know what are the products and services, yani the outcomes of your organization to able to link all of these together. Maybe if you bring all the employee in your organization, then the risk will be very high for the uh, COVID-19. Maybe you will spread, okay, uh, the virus within uh, your employee. Maybe the risk will be very high for you. Now, again, you need to balance all of these. Again, you need to, to identify the business strategies and of course, uh, support from management. 
Number five, you need to focus on the uh, other uh, planning. For example, 70%, maybe out of 70%, 30%, they can access to the resources. But how we will ensure that and that they will continue, okay, with these activities. I want to just uh, create uh, these uh, rate in proper way between the employees. And one of the uh, component of the risk landscape is to look at the government actions. We, we cannot control any actions that it will come from external factors. Okay, for example, they will close uh, the airport. You cannot travel. Again, you need to consider about this one. Maybe, okay, they will tell you for 14 days there will be a uh, guarantee. Therefore, we cannot come out and go to uh, the offices. All of these restrictions, guidelines, social distancing that the government, okay, insisted to implement maybe by force or maybe just they will allow you to, to do it by yourself, you need to consider it within the organization. Now, for example, if there are 10 employees that are working within, within the same department and they are very close to each other, then if you need to bring them, if you need to bring them to ensure that your business will continue, then you need to consider about the social distancing. Uh, again, you need to change the structure. You need to change the structure. Because by existing uh, structure, it will be very difficult for you, okay, uh, to uh, implement, okay, the, uh, the, uh, the government actions. This is the area that we need to focus related to the landscape. But also at the same time, we want to know what will be the impacts. Why impact is very important to consider because for in, in a business continuity, if there is no impact, then you don't need to continue with your business because your business is operating exactly as usual. You need to identify the impact, the business impact, so that you will know what you will do next. Always business impact can be measured either by financial impact or operational impact. And you will take a decision that we need to continue with product A or service A only if you just bring the financial and operational impact in place. There is a tool actually will show you how to uh, uh, measure uh, the financial and, uh, and operation impact. And this tool is called BIA, Business Impact Analysis. It's a very good tool. Because this tool really it will indicate that this business process is not critical. And the second process is critical. Therefore, during a pandemic, you need to run a business uh, uh, process number two. But again, for process number two, what are the resources I needed to continue operating process number two? It is my responsibility to link the risk landscape with the outcome of BIA. Yani, I cannot decide on the criticality of my business processes unless I should create or develop the risk landscape. Because risk landscape will show me, okay, uh, which processes are critical through BIA. Small example now, this COVID-19, okay, impacted over the business, absolutely yes. But for us, for some, some, some organizations, and they will state that we need to continue serving our customers, like banks. You will go to a branch, okay, to complete your business transactions. But still, you cannot just uh, do it uh, exactly the same like in, in, in a normal environment. Only they will accept five customers, okay, only within each time, only five customers, then you should uh, stay outside. Again, for me as a bank, uh, I need to speed up the process to ensure to, uh, I can complete or accommodate the entire customers. Therefore, I need to identify which business processes are critical so that I can link it with the impact. And this impact came from the risk landscape. You know, COVID-19, for example, did not impact only, only, only one part of the business complete functionalities within the business. 
Okay, therefore, I need to ensure that human resources will function, marketing department will function, IT department will function, operation department also will function. These functionalities, if you want to bring it together, then I need to ensure that landscape, it will impact over everything. Like social distancing should be there. I should ensure that they will use uh, the mask, for example. And they, okay, all of these I need to prepare within the organization. Okay, and this will show you how you need to bring uh, the employee together so that the work will be in proper way. Because what you need, you need to ensure that the services and products will work. Okay, and not only any service or any products, uh, the critical services and products. Therefore, BIA will come in the picture. If you want to develop a pandemic planning, absolutely you need a BIA. Of course, if you need to develop a business continuity, again, you need a BIA. Because based on the landscape, risk landscape that you identified, plus uh, the, 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 the BIA, it will indicate from 100 business processes that you are running in your organization, only there are two critical business processes that it will impact over the organization. Maybe it will impact over your services or product. Therefore, you should know very well for pandemic planning on business continuity pandemic planning, you should know very well the outputs of your business. Very, very well. What are the outputs? Okay. Which products you are doing, which services, okay, you are serving your customers. If you know, then very easy you can identify the risk landscape and using the BIA okay, to see it in proper way. Now, BIA is the heart of the pandemic planning, including on the top, the risk landscape. BIA is a systematic process. Yani, if you did not implement BIA, how I will know that out of 100 processes, okay, 20, 15 are critical. Therefore, I need to use a specific process to indicate whether this process one and process two are critical or not. But who will evaluate the organization, the department? I'm working in marketing department. In normal situation, we are running 20 business processes. But because of this pandemic, we cannot run at 20 because 50% or 70% of our employees are not exist within the organization. They are working from home. Therefore, they cannot access to all the resources, maybe 50% of the resources. Maybe I'm alone. I have a specific capabilities. Uh, therefore, I need to link all of these with, the, with the, uh, the, uh, the critical or with the business processes that I am producing. Therefore, out of 20, we need only one or two uh, uh, business processes to ensure that we are serving customers. Still, so the customers can uh, get our services at minimum level. At minimum level. Okay. Now, this BIA, it will indicate. Without BIA, it will be very difficult for you to build a pandemic plan. It's very difficult. Okay. But to use a BIA, then you should know the outputs of your organization. What is a BIA actually? BIA is dependent on some inputs so that it will process and will give you an output. And most of the business continuity practitioners, okay, they are using BIA. And BIA is not only one time use, it is a continuous process because changes will come. When the government will take a decision because of this pandemic, maybe it will impact over my business processes. Now, because I cannot run the same business process because of legal entity, then I need to create a workaround. But how to create a workaround? Uh, uh, do you think I need to implement a, uh, or create a workaround for this business process? Because if I did not run it, the uh, and the, uh, I, I cannot serve, the production will stop. I cannot serve my customers. Therefore, to develop a BIA for pandemic planning, 
then you need to identify all the activity processes in your organization. Maybe you cannot do it by yourself. Maybe marketing department, they know what are the uh, activity processes. Maybe market, uh, maybe HR department, they will know. Maybe uh, IT department, they will know because this is the core okay, activity that they are performing. Therefore, they, very easy, they can identify the critical activities. Then, to run this process, okay, for example, one of the process, I need uh, to uh, transfer money from one account to another account. For example, from account A to account B. To, this is very critical activity because I know if the customer could not transfer, he will not be happy. It will impact over us financially, operationally. Therefore, I need to know what are the IT information technology resources and non-IT resources. I need to complete this process. Maybe to transfer, you allow the customer to transfer, you need a platform, you need the internet con uh, connectivity, you need a specific application, you need hardware, maybe you need authorization. Uh, one of the member, for example, in marketing or customer services department should approve, for example. Then all these resources you need uh, to identify it. When the disaster will come, when uh, the pandemic, for example, impacted my business. Therefore, I cannot run it in the normal way. What will be the workaround procedures? And workaround procedures should be agreed within the organization and aligned with the requirements, okay, within the uh, legal entity. If you are operating, for example, as a bank, you should ensure that you are okay, aligning with central bank or uh, the government actions. When you will take all of these to BIA box, to process, then from the uh, processes that you identify, then you will identify what are the critical processes. Maybe you will identify that to transfer money from one account to another account is not critical. Operationally and financially, okay, will not be critical. But an inquiry from a customer, a customer, okay, uh, for you, it would be a critical because you need to go back to them. It's very important to answer their question. Therefore, you will find that this process is critical. Therefore, BIA will act as a filter. And the impact, always it will be either within the financial, okay, and operational activities. Then, what will be the right time to serve the customer. Now we are not in normal situation. Therefore, in normal situation, we can serve the customer within three hours. But because of the situation, because of this pandemic, we cannot serve the customer within three hours. Therefore, you need to identify their recovery time. It is your responsibility. Can, now, it is based on the resources that you have. Maybe because of this situation, the pandemic, we can serve the customer within four hours, five hours. Impacted, absolutely yes. Okay, you know, for example, banks now decided that according to the government actions, that only five customers, they should be in the branch at a time, only five customers. Okay, and the rest, they should stand outside. But if I'm a customer, I can see queue, okay, very long queue, okay, 20, 30 customers at one o'clock p.m. It's very hot, temperature is 40, humidity is 120, for example. Do you think I will uh, continue? No, maybe after 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I will leave without completing my transaction. It will impact over the customers, of course, okay? Therefore, you need to uh, identify the time in proper way or time, or maybe you can do something else. Okay, I will allow the customer to sit in a specific format. And not all the critical processes, you can run it exactly within the same time. You need to prioritize. Okay, out of maybe five critical pro uh, processes, okay, then you need to prioritize. Maybe, okay, to serve a customer is for me is number one. This is very important for me. Okay, uh, something else, is, it will come next, but I should ensure that all the customers will be satisfied because I need to serve them. I need to complete their uh, transactions. 
you cannot just for each process identify process uh, uh, resources you need to uh, create these dependencies yeah and you think by uh, only one resource can accommodate all the critical business processes sometimes i cannot do it by myself i need more platforms i need more technology to implement for example these days you cannot just meet face to face you need applications this application you should uh, you should ensure that you will install in your system you need internet connectivity if the internet connectivity is not functioning therefore you cannot meet dependencies okay will be very important to ensure that you are using uh, the right resources to complete the critical processes then I need the work around procedures, the work for only the critical processes. Out of 25, what are the work around procedures? Because we are not in normal situation, therefore the procedures will be different. Okay, the procedures will be different. Now, how we can do it? Uh, how we will ensure that the right uh, service or the right product will achieve to the customer? Maybe we will not do it 100%, but for us, there will be a criteria. If we complete 80%, maybe it will be more than enough. Okay, therefore, BIA is the heart of pandemic planning. Again, I will repeat, guys. Number one, you should know very well about your uh, products and services. Very well. Organizational structure. Risk landscape related to COVID-19 or uh, related to this pandemic and then bring the uh, BIA to measure the financial and operational impact for the processes to able to identify with which uh, critical processes I should run, which kind of resources I need, and how we can just uh, create the relationship between uh, these to ensure that I will achieve my critical processes. Yeah, and in customer satisfaction, the products, yes, it will achieve to the customers to the end. Therefore, I'm using uh, the BIA for this. Roles and responsibilities. Ah, this is also very important because I cannot just distribute uh, the roles and res uh, responsibilities uh, during the pandemic across the organization. As I said, so, uh, while you are creating uh, the or identifying the critical business processes, should I, you should link it with the okay roles and responsibilities that people that they need to perform. Maybe during this pandemic, I don't need 100 employees. Maybe I need only 20. Therefore, who will be working within this specific crisis? Who will manage them? How the reporting will lie? Sometimes you need to change the structure. One of the organizations, I read a case before uh, two, three days in, in, in USA, one of the organizations just to adapt with the, with the current situation, was what, what actually they did, they changed, okay, uh, the structure to ensure that they will work, uh, okay, within this specific pandemic, within this specific environment, okay. Yani merge number of departments, uh, they reduce number of processes, all of these we do to ensure that, yes, okay, we can work uh, within this specific environment. Now, Another important element for roles and responsibility that it is your responsibility, your organization, uh, to communicate clearly the role and responsibilities uh, with your employee. As I said, today maybe my responsibility is one, two, three, but because of this pandemic, only I should do one and three. I don't want to do two because it will not add value, it's not critical. Also, you need to uh, focus on the, uh, on the people that they will work within the organization. Like, for example, today uh, I am working in a marketing department to complete a transaction. Therefore, I need uh, to communicate or I need to work with finance department. Finance department, again, they need something from operations. Therefore, I need okay, all of these group members to understand okay, uh, the, the, uh, the process very well. And best practice for business continuity and for pandemic planning, always for each key people, there should be uh, as a duplicate. This is very important because one, if you depend on one key person, 
may, for any reason, if the key person could not, okay, uh, attend or complete, therefore his or her duty can continue. And this is very important. And don't, uh, and you should ensure that, and uh, the learning care, okay, will be there within the uh, organization. Yani, you will transfer what you are doing uh, to others, so that if you cannot continue, others they can continue. This is a best practice. This is a best practice. Okay, yani, my recommendation really for each okay, key person that they are performing the critical business processes, always you need to identify okay, uh, their duties. Because why? Because they will uh, ensure that the business will continue. If in case I am impacted by the COVID-19, now I cannot work okay, because I'm sick, therefore another person can continue with this. Okay, this is roles and responsibility. And this is very important to able to communicate at the beginning. Changes will happen, of course, absolutely, yes. But you need to ensure that roles and responsibilities will be clear for this specific environment. Maybe if the situation become normal, then خلاص, maybe you will, the, uh, these roles and responsibilities okay, will not be exist. But you need these roles and responsibilities to ensure that okay, people, they will know exactly what to do. Roles and responsibilities for the critical business processes. I'm not doing a normal okay, uh, activities. Now, best practices stated that during the, uh, the, the pandemic, you need to focus on number of uh, things. You need to consider a number of key things so that it will create a complete uh, picture of the pandemic planning. And for example, how often will you meet? When? Timing is very important. Uh, very important because sometimes you are dealing with another uh, country, eight hours plus or eight hours minus, then you need to consider about the time. Okay, in case something will happen, what will be the escalation steps? Okay, uh, then which technology we need to use? If we want to meet, for example, why Zoom? Why we decided to go to Zoom? Why we, uh, okay, we'll go to Microsoft meeting, for example. And then, then we want to record and log any decisions that we will take. How we will log, how we will ensure that really the right message is uh, uh, reached to the audience. And for example, in terms of the communication, then we need to involve people, the stakeholders, Okay, how we will ensure that the customers will come, the stakeholders will join, the suppliers will understand our requirements, how we will ensure that all of the stakeholders uh, can just work and the communication will go to them. Therefore, it is the key consideration for you as an organization or, con uh, or our key people to understand my roles and responsibilities very well. Okay, this is for pandemic planning. You need to write. Again, changes will come. Maybe the government will take a decision the decision will impact over your responsibilities. Again, you need to go and change, okay? Because for pandemic, you are not alone, okay? There will be different factors that will impact, okay, the, uh, the, the development of roles and responsibilities. Now, best practice is stated that there should be specific checklist. You cannot just, just yani, uh, react uh, towards a pandemic like business continuity. Yes, business continuity is a must, it's very important, but it will touch only one element. Now, one of the checklists that you need to develop in the pandemic planning is monitoring process. Yani, uh, how you will monitor, who and what will be monitored. These three questions are very important and you need to document this one in the planning. Yeah, how you will monitor your activities through what? Maybe I will use a technology. Maybe I will develop a specific dashboard for me to able to see uh, the, the, the transactions. Okay. And who will monitor? Do you think we need to allow uh, all to monitor the activities or only concerned people? 
and which okay activities I need to monitor. Again, I will repeat: you it's not necessary during a pandemic to look at all the business processes. You need to focus only on the critical processes that already you use BIA okay to define it. Then you need to include others outside your organization like suppliers you need to take this information from the suppliers from legal entities like from uh, from world uh, world health organization okay from uh, industry expertise you need to collect this information they will give you best practices they will give you okay what you need to do uh, okay as to go to able to achieve to your objectives or critical uh, processes. All of these you need to bring in so that this advice will help you to reshape uh, the uh, business processes. And of course, you need to analyze uh, the guidance uh, from outside and inside so that you can react, okay, exactly towards the uh, guidance which you will receive from outside or maybe internally that you will do it. But again, sometimes uh, the, the decision that it will come from the government or legal entities, maybe it will impact. It is a must, it is a mandatory to do it. And therefore, you need to change uh, the, the, the checklist or monitoring process, roles and responsibility to able to tally with the decision that came from the legal entity. Number two, you need to develop a checklist for governance. This is very important. Why? Because you want to identify who can take a decision, how the decision will move from one point to another point, who are the membership, how you can just balance okay, between uh, the participants to able to uh, take the right decision, escalation process, roles and responsibilities, you will state it within this uh, governance framework. Because governance will guide you. And this governance already generated from the uh, internal and external factors. Therefore, roles and responsibilities, it will come under governance. Okay, the way that you are performing the task within the situation also it will come under governance. The escalation process, who will be involved, all of these, you need to just create the governance. But again, governance is not only just uh, for normal situation, is only pointing that specific environment. Again, when the situation will change, then the governance will change. Maybe the situation will become worse. Nobody knows. Then again, the governance, okay, you need to adjust. Maybe the inshallah and everything will go. Then again, we should, uh, governance maybe uh, it will change according to the environment that it will have. Okay. Uh, within the governance, we need to scan the horizon. This is very important. Yani, for example, competitors, what they are doing, sales, okay, for example, within the, uh, within the, uh, within the environment, okay, or within the country that you are operating. Different scenarios, you need to include it also, okay, uh, because if, if you look at the numbers, for example, and you just captured some statistics and you, noted, and you notice that the numbers are increasing, okay, therefore maybe it will indicate that, ah, you need to stop one process, you need to add more processes, you need more resources. Therefore, you need to focus on these uh, scenarios to ensure that uh, uh, you are just implementing the right processes. Anything that you will do, you need to record it. So that, okay, for audit purpose, okay, for any specific activities that you need, okay, to go back, you have the records and you can go back to it like meetings, for example, or any actions that you will do, you need to record. Sometimes the direction will change. Oh, the di direction will change. For example, like before uh, one week, China uh, okay, stated that uh, COVID-19 become more aggressive now in uh, Beijing, for example. Okay, how this will impact over us, okay, in in Bahrain or in another country, for example. 
you think ready to become worse or not. Therefore, we need to follow all of these reports to able to take a decision, either to continue, to stop, to add resources, to all of this. Therefore, the sources of the information, okay, it will be part of the governance. And roles and responsibilities, also it will be part of that. My responsibility is only to feed the information. One of the areas that we need to, uh, to, to, uh, to, in, uh, to uh, embed within the pandemic planning checklist is health and safety. It's very important to identify the high risk staff. This is the key people. Therefore, you need to link it with the roles and responsibility. Okay, maybe I'm alone in this department. Maybe I know 20 or 30% of the business processes. Therefore, if you know your organization, your products and services, very easy you can identify the high risk staff. Then you need uh, to ensure that your organization or the place that you are functioning, okay, is safe. For example, you will buy items, okay, like hand gel, for example, wipes, masks, uh, okay, tissues, or anything or should be, okay, there within the area that you are functioning. It is your responsibility to ensure that, okay, uh, hygiene measures will be there. Yeah, and you need to uh, ensure that you are working in safe environment, hygiene, uh, and now you can implement through any process. Maybe you will bring a supplier, maybe you will do it by yourself, maybe you want to create your own procedures for hygiene measures, it's purely depend on you. And of course, sometimes you need to go and uh, consult with a medical advisor. Maybe, maybe. It's not a must have, of course, but if the situation is really critical within the country and the, the number is increasing, number of deaths is increasing, maybe you can just uh, consider uh, a consultant from a medical, in, uh, medical industry really to give you some advice what to do, okay? And of course, a number of organizations, they did like this, like for example, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, they appoint uh, medical advisors, okay, uh, to able to advise them what to do and what not, not to do, okay. And number five, we need to focus on the uh, cleaning, okay, process within the organization. Now, how you can define cleaning? Okay, under the pandemic uh, planning checklist, it's purely depend on you. Yani in the environment that you are operating, for example, when you will produce hygiene, okay, or uh, hygiene measures within your organization, therefore you need uh, to link it with their cleaning process, which kind of cleaning process you are implementing. And it's purely depend on you. Like if I'm working in, uh, in health industry, it will be different than training. It will be different than services organization like banks. It will be different than industry. You know, like for example, a bank, they are dealing with customers. Okay, customer, they should go and complete their transactions. Of course, there are technologies now, but sometimes customers, they should go to the branch and complete. But still, there are some businesses that you need to deal with the customer. But if you go to a manufacturer, they are not dealing with customers. They are only dealing with their employees. Uh, therefore, maybe the situation, the cleaning or hygiene process, it will, it, it will be different. Okay, then you need to consider about health and safety. Human resources. Now, because you are dealing with human resources, now maybe your employee or suppliers, it's very important to just capture their details. Sometimes maybe you, you want a key person, okay? And you need the key person to come to the head office to do the transactions. Therefore, you need to contact, or their contact should be up to date, okay? Sometimes, this is also possible, maybe if they cannot come, for any reason, they cannot come to the office. Therefore, it is your responsibility, okay, to take them. You should know, okay, how to reach to that specific point. Yes, of course, this is also important, not in all situations, if the situation is really uh, severe, okay. And also, you need to establish a process, okay, so that directly it will impact the staff. 
like in terms of communication, in terms of their roles and responsibilities, in terms of what they should do. For example, okay, today you will come for four hours and you can leave. Tomorrow you will come for eight hours and you will leave. You will not touch this. You will not communicate with, uh, with, uh, with your colleagues within the organization. Okay, uh, for example, change. You will do this, some structural change within the department. Okay, and all of these, you need to establish it. And of course, you need to focus on the communication. And a clear communication should move to the start. Uh, avoid any noise. Very clear communication. Your responsibility is to do one, two, three, four. And as I said, it should be recorded so that I can just refer uh, to these decisions or communications later. Why communication with the human resources will be very important? And I want to ensure that they will give the message. They will come for four hours and not eight hours. Already I communicated with you, you need to come to the office for eight hours. You don't need, okay, uh, to do this and or that. Don't go and meet with others. All of these clearly communicated with the employee. Now, we know these days we are using technology, like meeting through Zoom, uh, we can access through our uh, resources uh, through uh, different structure, for example, VPN, okay, or maybe from different, okay, path. We can access to the, the, the resources easily, but again, it is different from one, in, one industry to another industry. Maybe services, okay, we can do it, but in the industrial, Okay, uh, industry is very difficult, it's industry. Therefore, we need to touch with the machines, we need uh, uh, resources, equipment, we need materials to mix, to do all of these. Therefore, the situation will be different than service organization. But not in all the service organization, we can use the same technology or similar technology, no. Then, therefore, we, we should know what, 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 what are the end products and services to able to Okay, uh, create the right okay, factors for human resources. One of the checklists also we need to consider for pandemic planning is business functions and processes. Business functions and processes are working together to able to identify how you can measure the critical business processes through BIA. BIA will act Okay, as a base for the business functions and processes. Each department, each department now, they should know what are the critical business processes. Yani prioritize the business functions is dependent on me. Now, if in your organization there are 20 departments during this pandemic, I'm sure 20 departments will not function. And to these 20 departments, only few, uh, they will be critical. The rest maybe, they will not be critical. But again, you should understand the time factor for it. Maybe, for example, just the example. Today is uh, uh, today, uh, maybe 7th of July, 2020. Assume HR department will not be critical. Still, we are dealing with some services and products. We are dealing with customers. We are only uh, utilizing 30% of our human resources. The rest, they are doing a minor, okay, processes outside the organization. Maybe HR, that specific time will not be critical. But if we will continue with the same process at the end of the month, then HR will be critical because HR will process, okay, uh, the salaries. If they did not process it, maybe for us, it will be something critical. I will not get my salary for first month. Maybe it's okay. For the second month, I will not be happy. Therefore, HR, it will be critical for a specific time. The timing, you need to include it in the business function and uh, processes as a checklist. When? Today is not critical. Maybe tomorrow it will be critical. And you are the right okay, person to decide because you know the business processes products and services from your organization. If you identify the business functions and processes, now you will identify the key people, maybe individuals or group of people, it depends on you. But again, you need the entire, okay, uh, uh, 
critical staff to able to uh, complete or to do these business functions. Sometimes maybe you are not doing by yourself. You are you need a supplier. You need to uh, you, you need to ensure that suppliers will do all of these processes. They have the capabilities and they have the knowledge to able to complete these processes. Maybe uh, in normal situation they will come to your office and they will do one, two, three, four. But in this situation, they are depending on something else. They need to access to your resources. Then you need to consider about security. Okay, because you want to allow your supplier to access to your uh, core application or to your database. Therefore, again, you need to consider about security function. Okay, and of course, the capability. Why capability? Maybe I am one person, I can just run 20 business processes. I am capable, I have the knowledge, I have the skills, I have, now it's linked with the human resources factors. And the department, they should, either, each department, they should identify, okay, uh, these activities to ensure that within the pandemic, I can just use Mr. X and Mr. Y because they will run 20 bus critical business processes through all of these resources. Therefore, I, I linked the business functions and processes together with the governance under the pandemic plan to able to okay, ensure that you will deliver your products or key products and key services. Number five, you want to focus on the opportunities. Like if during this situation, you don't want to uh, uh, spread the, the, the COVID-19 across, uh, across your employee, then maybe it will impact over the community. Therefore, you need to focus on the technology or a specific decision that it will allow your staff to work from home or from other areas. Now, again, to work from home, again, you need to consider about the technology. Maybe, yes, you can find some free or easy applications to use for meeting like Zoom or Microsoft Meeting. But if I want to access uh, to the resources, sometimes I need to pay more. Maybe I need to go to, uh, through virtual uh, network. Virtual network, maybe it will be expensive for me. But again, again, if I want to pay, what will be the, the outcome? You think I need to pay 1,000 dinars to access to virtual private network to only to do some specific uh, or run a specific business processes that it will not add any value to me? Then you need to consider this one, okay? And again, when you are focusing on the pandemic planning, always you try to minimize face-to-face -face contact. Absolutely, yes, we know this, okay? But again, which way I need to implement to able to continue with the same functionalities, uh, but it will give me the same result. It is depending on you. Now, you are the right person to measure, okay, and assess, uh, the resources that you will use in terms of technology, in terms of the capabilities, okay? And it's very important to, uh, to assess the key suppliers that you are dealing with. Now, in, in, in normal situation, if you are dealing with a supplier, you need to ask them for business continuity planning you, because you are depending on them, especially key suppliers. You are depending on them, okay? They are supplying materials, machines, or anything. If they don't have a business continuity plan, then it will impact over you. Absolutely, yes. Now, during the pandemic, you should ensure that they have, okay, uh, their checklist, their own checklist. They have uh, the capabilities to perform, okay, the critical tasks for you. Oh, absolutely, yes. I cannot just ignore the subtitles, especially these days, you know, for example, uh, if you are dealing with subtitles outside Bahrain, maybe they cannot supply the, the, the materials on time, Maybe the cost, okay, it will increase, for example. Maybe you will get only 50% of the uh, materials, and maybe this 50% it will not allow you to complete your service. And also, the technology that you need. Who can access, okay? For example, it is your responsibility. You know the demand over the uh, internet bandwidth these days are really very high very high, the demand is very high, okay, because 
everybody's working from home, as everybody's working uh, uh, or using technology to complete their transactions. Therefore, we need to consider, we need to assess, this is very important also for us, I'm operating in Bahrain, I need to assess the capability of the internet. If the capability is, is, is not strong, therefore I cannot meet, I cannot use the technology to complete my business processes. Oh, internet capability measurement is very important for you. You, you, know, you should know whether the STC, for example, Viva, Betelco, that they're providing the internet, really they have the capability, uh, the, the bandwidth is strong, it will accommodate, okay, or not. Because if it's not accommodated, maybe I can, I want to reduce the, 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 uh, the bandwidth. Then I need to consider about the security wise of it. Oh, I want to allow my staff to access to VPN. What will happen if something happens, for example, but what will be the impact if one of the employees uh, do something wrong or he did something wrong? Do you think it will impact over my system? You know, these days, oh, hackers, okay, they are they are playing an important role within this uh, pandemic okay, environment within the organizations in terms of just try to access to the database, manipulating and all of these. Yes, it, it's their opportunity because everybody is using this big cloud uh, to access uh, to their information. Therefore, security is one of the key considerations. Again, it will impact over you. Maybe you need to spend more, or maybe you need to spend less, or maybe sometimes you need to stop some okay, processes because of security issue. Okay. Also, one of the checklists that you need to consider for pandemic planning is the, your stakeholders. Okay, stakeholders are, of course, yani playing an important role for some organizations. And of course, you know, without suppliers, you cannot operate. Like BIBF or your organization, you cannot operate without suppliers. Okay, because you, 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 you need to buy computers from suppliers, you need to buy uh, the furniture, stationaries. Okay, like in the, uh, a factory, they want uh, raw material from a supplier, machines from a supplier. Therefore, you are depending on supplier okay, to run your operations. Then you need to monitor the key suppliers, key customers. It's very important. Maybe they don't know. Okay, you will develop a specific application for them because of this environment to complete their transaction. Maybe they don't know how to use it. Maybe they don't know. Therefore, you need to ensure that the customers are using uh, this application in proper way. Therefore, you need to design this application in simple way, user friendly. Again, you need to keep all of this in your mind while you are just dealing with the customer and suppliers. Sometimes, okay, if you cannot deal with this supplier, then you can, you, you should move to other suppliers. A lot of organizations in Bahrain, okay, what actually they did, they are dealing with the external supplier outside Bahrain uh, to just supply them some raw material. And the, because the cost was minimum. Now, because there is no travel, there is no, okay, planes or there is no ships or minimum, therefore they switched from inter, uh, external suppliers to internal suppliers within the country. But the price uh, they need to pay is maybe 50, 60 percent more. Okay, again, now they should take a decision whether we need to increase the price or not. Okay, uh, this is what you need to do whether I need to continue or I need to swap. Again, if you are dealing with mass of stakeholders, mass customers, or suppliers, or others, then you need to establish the right communication channel. Now, what is the best channel for you? Maybe you can use a cheap and simple way, like a social media, Twitter. Okay, this is free. Yes, you can just uh, create an account and just you can uh, chat with the uh, community or communicate with the community about anything. But how you will ensure that customers, suppliers, or your stakeholders, really, they will see, they will read, or they will react. Again, you need a specific mechanism for this, okay? Because to create an account in social media, of course you can. Maybe you have thousands of uh, followers, but how you will know that they will read and they will react. And one of the area that you need to consider with the stakeholders is very important to establish a link with the uh, legal entities, like 
central bank, if you are working in a bank, or if you are working in communications like, uh, like uh, someone, uh, Battlecore, STC, and then RTA or TRA, sorry, is very important to be considered. Okay, then the local bodies or legal entities, okay, the must within this specific duration because they will take a decision, okay, for a specific elements. And these decisions will impact over your processes. But now again, when you should measure the impact, you need to identify all of these components, okay, from the uh, legal entities, decisions, actions, change, add, delete, okay, and then you can just embed it within the processes. Sometimes it will be very expensive for you to do. Just a small example, if you go to a barber now, okay, to cut your hair, uh, actually, they increase the price. Why you increase the price? Because we need to use a very special, okay, uh, tools. We need to wear, okay. Therefore, all of these we bought. It's very expensive for us. Absolutely, yes. Now, it is linked with the who are the stakeholders. Uh, look how 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 the price will change. How the processes will change. Okay, uh, on which base you, you did it, yeah, Barbara? Because this is a requirement. Who communicated with you? Uh, of course, we have established a communication with the legal entity. Legal entity, we have uh, subscribed, for example, with the social media or uh, subscribed with a specific platform, and they will update us. It's very important because if they did not use this tool, okay, and if there is an audit or there is a check, maybe they will close your business. Therefore, we need to identify the stakeholders' requirements in proper way. And, uh, and the, 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 the item that you need to consider for stakeholders is the communication. Therefore, to prepare a plan for a pandemic really is not easy. It was not there before. Yani, a lot of organizations focused a lot on business continuity. Only when there is no power, there is no uh, core system, or absenteeism of the of, of key staff only few which will impact only on them only on a specific department but very few organizations actually uh, they did not prepare fully 100 percent but they identify okay uh, some components for pandemic Employee support is one of the checklists you need to include it in the pandemic planning according to the best practice. But all of these practices came from different industries. Yani I captured it from, uh, from Business Continuity Institute and another institute is called Disaster Recovery Institute in the US and Business Continuity Institute in the UK. Okay, the, the employee support according to ISO 22301, they stated that to ensure that you will support your employee, there is a specific standard that you need to follow. Number one, they stated that you need to ask, what do we need to consider, okay, during this pandemic? Yani, do you think we should consider about the critical activities or all the activities? Do you think we need to consider about all the employee or only key employees? Also, where are our blind spots? For example, the things we don't know that we don't know. This is very important because sometimes if we are not capturing the right information from the uh, sources like um, legal entities, maybe we will perform something, it will impact over the uh, organization. We are not serving the customers or customers will stop okay, buying from us because of this situation. Because of this situation, absolutely we cannot follow the existing policies and, 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 and procedures. Therefore, we need to change, we need to add, we need to remove. Absolutely, I and mean, this is very important. Now, for us, as an organization, we need to understand our products and services very well. Therefore, what are we doing well within this specific pandemic? For example, the organization will focus on the service. Out of 20 services, okay, 
ask uh, uh, out of 20 services, we are really, uh, we are really doing very well, okay, uh, with two services. Customers are happy, and we should ensure that, yes, these two services are pr producing the outcome. Sometimes we cannot depend on our capability. We need to bring the capabilities from outside, maybe suppliers, maybe from other okay, sources, then uh, from where we need to bring them. Do you think really we need them? Really we just embedded them in the organization for, for continuation of the processes or not? Then these standards, you need to include it in the pandemic planning checklist to ensure that you are producing the complete checklist. This checklist will show you that you implement this one, then the implementation is purely dependent on you. Each organization, they know, okay, according to their requirements, according to their needs, they know how to implement, they know, okay, what to do, according to uh, the outputs of, okay, uh, them. Life cycle, because this plan, it should go to a life cycle. Yani somebody will initiate, you need to collect all the components of the planning, you need to do a real implementation. It's not only planning, okay, we stated in the plan, every week we need to communicate with our employee, okay, about X, Y, Z. Okay, you wrote this one in the plan, but how you will know that you are implementing during the pandemic? Therefore, the life cycle, it will go from the planning to the implementation. Now, your responsibility in the pandemic okay, environment, you need to record all the actions. Why best practices is stated that you need to record so that you will allow people to go back very easy. Now, which mechanism you need to use to record is purely depend on you. I know some organizations, okay, uh, they changed their policy. They stated that WhatsApp now is an official communication tool. Normally, it is not an official communication tool. It's between the groups. But they changed the policy and they added this specific point. Now you, will, you need to use a WhatsApp. This is an official communication tool. Yani, if the head, okay, sent you a message, uh, please do this one. This is an official communication. Okay, just because of this situation. Okay, what is the purpose? Uh, speed, fast, you can read. Maybe you will not open your PC, okay, 24 hours, but I will ensure that at 11 o'clock p.m. if I send you uh, something to do, maybe WhatsApp you can see. Maybe you cannot see the social media time to time. This is some organizations, of course, I know in Bahrain. Okay, they adhere this one in their policy, WhatsApp. Okay, I don't know if you, okay, for some organization will say, no, it is not good practice. For some, they think, yeah, really, it's good here. Yeah. Okay. And of course, it is depend on the time frame of this pandemic. And according to the indicators, okay, this pandemic will continue maybe for one year or for two years. Nobody knows. Therefore, I need to create uh, these iterations to ensure that I am doing the right way. Then the plan will change. As I said, okay, before one week, uh, China I stated that uh, there is a new, new format of COVID-19 and it is uh, really these type of viruses are danger more than this COVID-19, which they already stated in the beginning of the year. Therefore, okay, uh, maybe the organization, they will do something else. They will reduce number of employees. They will do something else and they should adhere with the uh, government actions. Otherwise, maybe they will create a bigger impact, a bigger impact. Okay, the plan life cycle is very important because somebody will initiate, I need to plan, I need to collect all this information to prepare the plan and to implement. Again, I need to monitor any changes that will, will happen within the environment, then I can change the plan. Plan will not remain exactly the same. Oh, especially with this uh, pandemic. Okay, today, maybe for one week, uh, number of infected will be very low. You'll be very happy. But after one week, maybe the number will increase. Maybe then again, you cannot continue with the same planning. Suddenly the government will take a decision. Maybe this decision you need to uh, embed it within your planning. Therefore changes will happen. 
عشان هذه you need to open a channel for legal entities maybe inside the country or outside the country to follow to see to able to react to able to react this is the purpose of uh, plan life cycle it's very important it is your responsibility okay to do it maybe you can develop a team to look at all of these okay uh, components in the plan or maybe you will outsource it's purely depend on you okay if you go to uh, business continuity institute bci.org the bci.org uh, actually, what uh, they are doing uh, on a weekly basis, they are publishing uh, a report. And this report is related to how organizations are dealing with pandemic. Not the detailed description of their plan, no. Yani whether they are changing the plan, they are, uh, they are just changing the process, they are adding, removing, communicating. If you just go from from the first edition, where they established uh, on March, uh, okay, if you just, you can see really the behavior of the organization toward the pandemic change. At the beginning, their consideration was very limited. No plan, less plan, only we assign one person to do it. But now, no, actually, you will see the responses are completely changed. Now, some organizations in the UK, they created actually a, a, a new department, okay? Their job is only to capture the information uh, from the legal entity, do the analysis, again, just send it back to the employee, especially if the organization is very big and they are doing very critical activities. Okay, guys? Now, for plan life cycle, there are some key considerations, really, which came from the best practice to be able to embed it within the uh, pandemic okay, planning. It's very important you should know or you should monitor the situation within your area. Within your area, for example, Bahrain, or maybe uh, this, the city that I'm operating. And all of this information, you can capture it from different sources. In case if something will happen severe, how it will impact over your organization? What will be the impact over your uh, products and services? Now, if, if the customer will not come to me because I'm selling something tangible, then may it will impact over my organization. I cannot generate uh, cash. Uh, I don't know if you just read the report before two weeks or three weeks. Okay, Bahrain uh, Chamber, they uh, created a report related to the small and medium business. What will happen, uh, okay, uh, for them uh, after the government will remove, okay, their support from these small and medium organizations. And they expected that 40 to 50 percent of these small organizations or these small shops okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll quit from the market. And actually this has happened. And you, personally, personally, I saw a lot of uh, shops, okay, closed down. Closed down, absolutely yes. Okay, why? Because there is no customer. Okay, uh, yani, anything they will do, if they change the plan, if they add, if they remove, they cannot do it. This is the nature of their business. Therefore, they need to implement exactly according to the uh, government actions or decisions. But this is the nature of their business. This is the nature, they cannot change it. Maybe for services we can do like BIBF, what we did actually, okay, now we are doing a virtual class. Still, yes, maybe the impact will not be exactly like a face-to-face, -face. maybe, okay, it will be, you need technology, you need, uh, you need uh, so many factors, but still we are continuing with this uh, processes with the same services but for others they cannot you need to come you need to go because they will serve you something tangible if you if you will not go if you will not buy from them if you don't use their service or products they will close down absolutely yes okay now this is the the, the case happened for example uh, government before three or four months, they, they, they decided to stop all cinemas in Bahrain. Okay, no cinemas, finish. Okay, now, what they should do now? 
they create they, they came up with an idea that okay we will we will open uh, our, uh, a cinema business in the environment open environment you can come with your car and you can see movies again there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, discussion about this one okay in this summer for two hours i need to start my because i need air condition two hours i need to 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 run my air condition in my car how it will impact over the mechanical components within the car this is what the discussion about this one also maybe in winter is okay very good okay but during summer i can you think it will work for them uh, they, they need to consider actually uh, bahrain cinema company went through all of these analysis they did all of these uh, study okay do they need a space okay what would be about the sound for example, okay, do you think they need to start the, 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 their air condition for two hours? Do, do you think we should bring the air condition for them? How we can control the air condition within the environment? All of these, of course, they need to go through it and they went through it as to give the right, at least the right product. Maybe not effective like before, but the product will be uh, right, okay? And of course, we need to focus on the, the, the pandemic plan itself, the components of the pandemic pandemic plan, always it will be measurable. It means and we can uh, do uh, the measurement. We can see, okay, that here, the, really, this is implemented or not. And of course, without test, it will not work. If you just develop a plan and just, uh, you keep the plan on your desk, it will not work. You need to do exercise. You need to test, okay, whether the components that you add in the plan workable or not. Okay, yeah, and for example, you will tell your staff, uh, uh, today or tomorrow, nobody should come to the head office. No one. You want to close head office. And I need you to work from your home. You need to see the result. Whether really they can access, they can use the resources, uh, they will participate with each other. These tests, you will ensure that, yes, the plan is okay, accurate. Sometimes maybe you need uh, to add more resources. Because during the, the test and exercise, you can identify the gap. And of course, it's very important uh, to go uh, to peer organizations. And for example, as I say, a lot of this, I mean, a lot of organizations implemented their own way. Some of them really succeed, and some of the organizations they did not succeed. Okay, for these successful organizations, maybe you can just uh, and gain okay what they did. Okay, the lessons from and it capture the, 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 the outcome of what they did so that you can establish, okay, the same com concept, not the, the same uh, method, the same concept and the organization. Therefore, you need to also consider about this one in the plan. Now, plan life cycle, it will start from initiation until you reach to the end. Therefore, the information that you need to capture should be up to date. And you need, you, you the organization, should, should uh, ensure that these resources are uh, trust resources. And I can depend on it. Not, okay, I will go to the social media, to Twitter. Okay, just I will see a statement that something will happen. Okay, or uh, for example, uh, number of infected is increased by 200%. Or it will create a panic for me, then I will take a decision, then maybe the result it will be completely different my plan. And therefore, I need to focus on these trusted uh, sources. And of course, this plan, when you will develop and when you will test, always you, should, you need to communicate with all the stakeholders. Updates, okay, always it should be. Now, time frame is really depend on you. These days, the, because the duration when pandemic came up, to now is almost six months or five months. Okay, we cannot update the plan on a daily basis, but at least when the decision will come from the uh, government or legal entity, immediately we need to go and look at the plan, whether we can change, we can add, or we can remove. Okay, all of these we need to include it in the uh, checklist so that the plan it will be complete and it will touch all the elements of the uh, business continuity okay guys do you have any question do you have any question guys
Okay, thank you very much, guys, for listening. And I hope you will be safe and this virus will disappear and everything, everything come back to normal, inshallah. Thank you very much for listening and inshallah maybe we'll see you in different form.